The August 26, 2019 meeting of the Environment and Public Works Committee will now come to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Baroth. Here. Chairman Brew. Here. Ms. DeFlorio. Mr. Flagler Mitchell. Here. Mr. Howland. Here. Mr. Mafucci. Here. Mr. Will. Here. Is there anyone signed up for the public forum? There is not. Is there anyone present that is not signed up to speak who would like to address the committee at this time? The next item on the agenda will, is the approval of the minutes. You have the July 22nd, 2019 minutes of the Environment and Public Works Committee before you. They will stand approved unless the clerk is notified of any changes by the end of the day. The next item on the agenda is new business. Referral 19-0213. Moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Moved by Legislator Wilt, seconded by Legislator DeFlorio. Discussion on the floor, Legislator Wilt. Uh, yes, through the chair. Why are we, why are there only rehabbing the north and east sides of the building? Through the chair, <clears throat> good evening. My name is Bill Daly. I'm the uh, chief engineer with DES. Um, we hired Barrow Architecture to evaluate all the windows and um, evaluate their uh, evaluate <clears throat> the condition of the windows and their uh, energy efficiency. And they came back uh, with a recommendation just to. Uh, refurbished to north and east elevations. Um, we are replacing the west and the south. Yes, uh, through the chair, that's my question. Why are you only replacing the north and south and the um, the north or north? No, wait a minute. The <clears throat> south and west and the north and east is you're rehabbing. Correct, because of the evaluation um, through the chair, based on the evaluation of the architect, Barrow Associates, um, only the north and east uh, were in condition to be refurbished. The south and the west, due to elements, um, needed to be replaced, exposure to the elements. Okay, so through the chair, what I understand is the, so the, um, the north and east were in better shape, and that's why they're only going to be refurbished, right? That is correct, through the chair. Okay, thank you. Legislator DeFlorio. Uh, yes, through the chair. Can you please um, tell us the timeline for the project? Through the chair, uh, the project is scheduled to commence uh, December of this year, and it's scheduled to be uh, complete in October of 2020. Legislator Flagler Mitchell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, to the administration. When is this phase expected to start? Through the chair, could you repeat that, please? When is this phase expected to begin? Uh, through the chair, the project is scheduled to commence in December of this year. Uh, December? Correct. And thank you. And Mr. Chairman, through you, was window specialist Inc., the only bidder? Through the chair, that is correct. All right. Uh, just want to get it clear, just uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, they was the only bidder, right? Uh, through the chair, that is correct. All right. All right. Thank you. Is there Legislator Baroth? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, through you to the administration, I'm, I'm assuming that rehab is less expensive than replacement of a window, but can you give an approximation of how much less expensive it is? Uh, through the chair, um, the price was a lump sum uh, submission. It wasn't broken down uh, by rehab and new window. Um, we can. I can guess on the approximation of the value of the difference, 
this, to the chair, there's no need for that, but am I, you would agree that I'm correct that it's less expensive to rehab as opposed to replace, correct? Uh, through the chair, um, I'd have to base that upon the condition of the window. If the window is um, uh, extremely bad, I would guess it would be more expensive to rehab it than to replace it. If it was in marginal to good condition, I would guess it would be cheaper to uh, rehab than replace. Okay, so just to rephrase then, the, the, the windows that they've actually chosen to rehab, it's a less expensive process for those particular windows than replacing them would be, correct? Through the chair, that would be correct. Thank you. And then finally, um, I know that the incinerator has been used for a long time, and that's why we're getting rid of the chimney. Do you know approximately how long it's been since that incinerator was actually used through the chair? Through the chair, I do not. It's, it's been well, a long time. I'm not dread I don't dreadfully need to know, so that's okay. Thank you. Any further questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Item carries. Next item, please. Referral 19-0225. Moved by Legislator DeFlorio, seconded by Legislator Holland, Legislator DeFlorio. Uh, happy to. Through the chair, um, we've got this project kind of in the 2019-2020 cycle for projects for the airport authority. Um, given that this is uh, half funded by the state of New York through the capital aviation account through the Department of Transportation, um, they're very anxious for us to get going on this project also. Um, one of the, one of our motivations, internal motivations at the airport authority is to get this up and going so possibly we could get it operational during the winter of 2019-2020 when it would be most used. Through the chair, we would like to have this operational in the December-January time frame of 2019-2020. Through the chair, we'd like to get started on it right away. Okay. I know that's a vague answer, but we, we plan on getting it going as soon as possible. I have a couple questions, if I may. Um, what is the vendor availability for this type of system? Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, there are three to four national vendors that do this type of work throughout the country. Um, at the last committee cycle, I talked about how this technology is rapidly growing um, in cities throughout the country, in uh, city-run uh, parking facilities, but also stadiums, arenas, other uh, you know, public event facilities that uh, indoor or covered parking is a priority. Um, you know, that's kind of where it uh, is, the growth of this type of industry is. But I, I'm aware of you know, three to four national companies that uh, provide this type of uh, software and hardware solutions for parking garages. Okay, so I'm assuming there would not be any one of these three or four vendors nationally that would be located in Monroe County, correct? Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, I am not aware that somebody is located in the Rochester area. Okay, and um, another question, um, Mr. Director, and that is, so my assumption is the, uh, the bid process would try to reach out to as many of the qualified bidders as we felt were necessary to provide a competitive bid, correct? Through you, Mr. Chairman, absolutely. Um, there are national publications that uh, we intend on putting it out in. And uh, you know, to the credit of vendors, they are well aware that we've received this grant and they've already tried to contact us about what we're looking to do. So I suspect that it will uh, have uh, a handful of bids or responses to the RFP uh, should we decide to go in that route. Right, so it's on some radar as we speak then. Absolutely. O okay, and is this the type of system that the vendor would be doing the engineering, the oversight of the installation, but it would be installed by, let's say, electrical, local electrical contractors? 
uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, it's my belief that this contract um, with PASRO would allow us to put the specs, specs together uh, in order that fits our parking garage. There's no universal parking garage bid specs. And so that would become a part of, of the bid that we would put out or it would become part of the RFP okay. that we put out. And then certainly uh, PASRO would be involved in making sure that, that what we receive is what we are asking for when it comes to a bid document or uh, an RFP that we receive and eventually select. Okay, thank you. And my next question is, seeing that the system is somewhat unique and it's um, in what it provides, uh, is that something that the county uh, staff would be able to operate and maintain or would the total cost of the purchase include ongoing maintenance contracts down the road? Um, through, you, through you, Mr. Chairman, we haven't quite gotten to that point. To answer the first part of your question, yes. We have every intention on making sure that the software and hardware system that does get installed is uh, able to be controlled and maintained by county airport staff. Um, now, when it comes to any kind of um, extended warranty or, or any kind of uh, additional assistance. Uh, we will look at that as a part of a bid or an RFP document and make a decision at that point whether we want to include it or make it an ad alternate as a part of that particular document. Yeah, yeah, okay. I agree with that approach. Okay, thank you. Legislator Holland. Thank you. I second that, Director. Any further discussion on this item? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, item carries. Are there any other matters to come for the committee? There being no other matters, the August 26, 2019 meeting of the Environment and Public Works Committee stands adjourned. The next meeting of the Environment and Public Works Committee will be held on Monday. September 23rd, 2019 at 5.45 p.m.